to. Hello, this is Cannabis Man Seeds, episode 11. Organic 101 Growing Techniques for Organic Cannabis. Today, we're looking at the AK-47. It started budding on the 23rd of August. And as you can see, it's still growing. It's budding. I have a measuring tape here. Like it's gonna make sense anyway, but the reality the plant well let's say the plant itself is probably can you see it up there how high that is? What number that is? 139 inches and that's to that one one branch here so it's almost 12 foot to this branch and I still have tops up here so this plant's like 14 feet tall AK-47 started February 17 and it'll be six months old in 10 days all of these were started in February and as you can see the AK grew larger than I expected I thought it would be big but I had no idea that it would go through the roof Literally, I topped it twice. It probably would be 17 feet tall. So I recommend if you buy Cannabis Man Seeds, AK-47s, crossed with Skittles, you want to plant it by itself, and its nearest partner should be 12 feet away. And just watch it go. I believe this plant would be 17 foot tall. It would be enjoyable. Next year, I'm going to put this plant all by itself and just see how big it gets. Here we got... Here we got... A plant that grew over the winter. And naturally, when I made seeds, the, a couple seeds fell in the ground because this had a plastic cover on it. And this grew in the winter. So when I started cleaning this place up, like around January, I found two plants. So I let this one go, and it turned out to be a girl. And basically, pretty much it's a blueberry. It's budded nice. And so I let it go, and it's kind of interesting. It's a question mark plant, but it's my strain. Here we have a Mr. Nice. Now, the Mr. Nice, the Mr. Nice is up to the ceiling. I've been raising the greenhouse. And next year, I just won't put a cover on to the fall. That way, I'll know how tall it'll have to be. Here, the Mr. Nice, it's in the ground about seven inches, and it's 134. So, once again, it's close to 12 feet tall. I had to top every, all the plants. They didn't need to be topped. Topping a plant benefits it though. It will make it spread out and grow more. But if you don't have to top it because it's naturally these plants are going to bouquet and turn into just bountiful plants. Don't top it. Let it go. Believe me, it's a lot of work though. You can start seeds in January, but I don't recommend that. This is what happens when you start them in February, they get moths, so you can start them in March, you can start them in April, and as you start them later, they won't get as big, but believe me, if you're going to grow it, you can only grow six plants in the state of California, or wherever you're, you know, you can grow where you're at, you might as well grow the biggest plants possible, because one day they're going to tell you, you can't grow a plant that big, can you believe that, and that will happen, here we have a Girl Scout cookie, this was the smallest plant in the garden that one time. And it's it's cutting through the roof here of the greenhouse. This used to be the, the height of the greenhouse. Here I rose it up, raised it up. I'm gonna raise it up again. Eventually it'll be done. You get a lot of rain up here in the Emerald Triangle. Here we have some cherry pie. This is a beautiful plant. It's just going. It started budding. Everything's budding, which is very nice. We have a green crack over here. Got a 10-foot green crack. I've never had a green crack over 5 feet tall. Interesting. These are cherry pies. We're just walking through the little maze here. Coming in here in between these two cherry pies that are eight, eight feet tall. Here 
then we counted the other candidate that just naturally grew. It's a blueberry, I can tell. It's got beautiful buds on it right here if you want to zoom in. It's just started budding last week. It seems to be a fast butter. So I actually write on the bamboo, this is question mark, but I can smell it's blueberry. And at 7.28, it started budding on the 28th. So this has been budding for a week. So it looks nice. It's all healthy, bountiful. It's busting through the ceiling. I have to raise the house its final time. Here we have the green crack, which is really just a big, beautiful plant. I like green crack. It's kind of delightful. I like blueberry. Look at the bountiful. This is the southern side in here. Look at the ton, ton of bud. Like I said, if you start this plant in January, this is how big it gets. Believe me, this plant would probably be seven pounds. In Oregon, if you have more slight, wow, you could probably, this would probably be a 10 pound plant. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, well, we're walking back around the cherry pies. Which are budding, which are really delightful. The cherry pie doesn't get this big, but cross with the Skittles, it's amazing. It's just bounty food. The cherry pie cones that I cloned and made seeds of were more of a Christmas tree. Even buds, but weren't were one pound plants but weren't structured they didn't have that structure everything here has an incredible structure you have all laterals you have a branch off a branch off a branch which is very very nice see now these two cherry pies were planted eight feet apart but they're touching so I recommend 10 foot. I know a lot of people don't have space, but to have a true bounty full and believe me, these would supply bud all around, top and bottom, but when they touch, you actually lose growth on both sides. Here we have a gelato. And you always write on the bamboo what it is, and then when it gets ready to bud, and it's getting ready to bud, I have a huge gelato inside there. It's just ripping through the ceiling. You really can't get in there. But on the corner, this is a Khalifa Kush right in there. And this Khalifa Kush is just a monster right here. This, <coughs> this Khalifa Kush that's here and in here, next to the sour diesel, next to that huge sour diesel. They just overcame, over, overwhelming, it's amazing, great strains, you know, didn't know the Lord was going to give me such big plants, I'm happy with that. Like I said, I've made strains before, not all plants were huge, every one of these is the genetics, look at the genetics on them, look at branch off branch, all of these inside there, I mean, it's amazing that a cannabis plant can grow and there's no light in there, but it's still going. Here we have spearmint, which is fine. It grows good. The plants accept it. They don't fight. Here's an OG Kush over here. Once again, this OG Kush and that sour diesel, they are eight foot apart. Now, I didn't expect the OG to get this big, but I'm very happy. I knew the, o, the sour diesel would get huge. So next year, these plants will have to be probably 11 foot apart. So basically, everything is on a double double netting except for this one because this wasn't this one was actually stainy you can see in episode three or four this was just the last plant planted and it was dainty but it's really nice and gelato skittles should be interesting here this is double netting this cherry pie this cherry pie was always a hedgehog and so when it was like four feet tall it was it was wide and so, and I put this netting on, and then it's kept going and going, and I caught it again. So what happens with this netting is, see this? If it was to rain, 
I could grab this plant and shake it with the bamboo. See that? And what it does is these cantilever and they plant hold each other. So when these things get a bunch of buds, they're going to get top heavy and lay down. But the netting is going to catch it and support it. So it's very nice. I always recommend the netting. This one only had one. I didn't catch it. Some of them inside I didn't get because they were just too big. But I recommend doing the netting twice. Believe me. It'll save you tons of a, a pain when all you see colors lay down and you can't get to them and it, they don't develop correctly. And you, you know, you're growing this for many, many months and you want it to be successful. So Kenneth Man Seeds or grow, Organic Growing Techniques want you to be happy. Look at the color. It's just beautiful. Like I said, everything got dirt. Keep, so I look at the leaves, nothing's yellow. If you have a plant that's growing, and the branch, when did the branches turn yellow or discolored from the rest? There's something wrong with that. And this branches are delicate, so they could break off the plant or just crack. And if that does, that's like a cancer. It'll spread, it'll contaminate the plant, it'll slow the watering down or anything, and it'll start a disease. So you automatically have to climb in there. And again, look at the thickness of these plants. Or look, we're inside here. I mean, there's another branch in there. So there's, there's just tons of of laterals and, and just great growth. But so you always want to look at the colors. If, and as these plants get bigger, the bottom branches, I know you want to say branches, but you can't. I just get done top, bottom, and cleaning out all the bottoms of these plants. I cut off all the little branches that don't grow, and you need to have flow down here. You see this? See down there? And I, I hit everything with the sealer. So that black is a sealer. But I go and cut all these branches off and leaf, because you have to, because if that leaf will be wet and they can create mold and mildews, and bugs love all that. So, you know, clean up your plant. You don't have to hit it with the tar spray, but I do because it's a water repellent, it's a bug repellent, and if that branch breaks, see how thick they are? They will cause your plant to stop growing, or they will ruin your plant, and your buds will not be filled, fulfilled, they won't be successful. So always check. So we're coming into the, the last plants planted. This was a gelato. I put a gelato in a 65 gallon bag here. And these were dainty. These start taking off. And this needs to be watered every three days. If it's 90 degrees or more, it might need to be watered before that. The bags tend to require more water. The plants out here are watered every four days. These have to be watered every three. And so I'm always experimenting. So this is a 45 gallon smart pot, which is great. But when it's over 90 degrees, this has to be watered every day because it dries out. And the plant will dictate it a wilt. And you don't want your plant to wilt. But it actually, it's good for small areas, but it's it takes so much growth away from the plant. I did this to show people that this bag is good, but it, the bigger the plant goes, the more water. If you have a huge plant like one of them out there in this one, you'll be watering twice a day, probably 10, 15 gallons. And this, if this is a huge plant, this 65 gallon, this will require 20 gallons, morning and night. The bags, after 90 degrees, it gets so hot. And the worst part about the bags is they require so much dirt. My holes in the ground, I only use three cubic foot of green fields, and two bags of happy frog, seven cubic foot of dirt. This requires two green fields and four frogs. Twice the much, as much dirt for this bag, and requires more. So if you can put your plants in the ground, you will have mega plants. You have plants like that cherry pie right there. Look at the difference between that. Show that plant. So being in the dirt, in the ground, with seven cubic foot of dirt, and then getting dirt every three weeks just for a soil amendment to feed the plant. And look at this. This plant is the same age, but it was more dainty. But I put it in the 65 gallon to show you that this takes twice as much dirt, yet it takes, can be, take 10 gallons of water twice a day over 90 degrees. And them plants out there, 
they get 20 gallons every four days. So basically, you get better growth. You do not want to water your plants every day. They do not like it. Believe me. We don't need it. Look at these plants out here watered every day. I water today, which is Tuesday. I won't water again till Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, I'll water again. The plants don't wilt. They're fine. If they wilt, I will dictate you need to water them, but these are happy plants. And believe me, more is not good. More feedings is bad. More water, you can create root rot. It's hard to create root rot in bags, but you can, believe me. Here we have the candidates that are getting pollinated. With the cherry pie, we have the lemon meringue, the padlock. This padlock is spectacular. I just planted, had a clone last year and found the seed of it. I'm so delightful. I hope it's a male. This padlock, it, it's, it, it, glows in, it glows in the daytime. Spectacular. We have this ogle berry, 26% THC. Nice. We have the white Tahoe. I like these trains. I never smoked any of these. I'm curious about all of them. Look, a mimoso. That should be interesting. That's orange, right? We have another candy land. I have a candy land in here. That's the biggest plant in there. It's Granddaddy Perps that make it. And oh my God, it, it would be a seven pound plant. And I, it's just a beautiful plant. You can't even get in there to see it. It's just unbelievable. But I'm gonna hit these with cherry pie. The trifecta that you can see in the episode when I show the babies, I'm using that male as pollen. So it's be interesting. I have the GMO cookies here. I heard this one, the Emerald Cup. I don't know. I can't keep on track with everything. But I have wedding cake. I have a suicide girl. And this is nice. This suicide girl here, she's been budding for about 10 days now, which is really nice. Which is really nice. The suicide girl crossed with, with cherry pie. That would be nice. If I could get these strains to finish earlier, and I believe this this suicide girl will, I want a male of her once I get seeds of cherry pie because I just want the plants to finish early. So basically, I have another gelato. This is the gelato everybody's raving about. I'm already growing it, the gelato 45. I have a cherry Skittles, which is probably my own. I have a Jaeger, a Circus Cookies, and a few more. But I'm going to pollinate 18 more flavors with cherry pie. And you should be delightful. Look, they all have different little characteristics, but this pad box is so spectacular. We're going to show you this as time rolls every two weeks. And when this starts budding, it's just amazing. I mean, I've been growing cannabis since 1982, and this is colorful. It's just amazing. But the, the Ogilberry, I can't wait. This I grew this last year, tried to make seed of it, but it, I, the pollen didn't last that long. It was seven months old, but it, the buds were huge and delightful, so I can't wait to have this strain. So here we come back to a Skittles that's in the 45, which is fine, it's happy, but it's kind of, you know, you can grow big plants in 45, you just have to water them and pay attention. That's all. Here we have the jet. Now see, I'm going to show you what seeds you have, two different strains at times, even more. Whatever the two strains you cross with, whatever made them, it can, the genealogy can go, you know, for, for 100 deep. But, so this is a jet, and I like this. This thing sexed early, which was nice. I like when they sex early, but this was rated at 33% THC. Tested, so I'm just curious because if you look at this one, it's just bountiful, it's just huge. It's, it's nice, it's in the 65. They do get big. Like I said, these four were the most smallest plants I had, so I waited, they sexed, and then I finally planted. I wanted to show them in bags. Here, this jet fuel is really unique. I had to dig a foot in the ground to drop the plant in, but I, it wasn't enough. I topped the plant twice. It just, it, believe me, this this would be another 14 foot. This jet fuel is nice. We showed you in the last episode. It has this leaf structure. 
It has these unique leaves right here. If you look at these leaves right here, you see these extra two leaves on that? You see that? Is that unique? It has that on a few of them, so I'm just curious. And this one's budding. So, really, not, I have the jet fuel, never really cared for it. But when I found out it has a 33% THC, I said, why not? So, these are Cannabis Man seeds that I made from all, all my strains last year. And they're all basically Avenue of the Giants. All huge, so I was very happy with the seeds I created, and I know they'll finish well because I done some planted some last year and finished them off. Actually, planted the seed August 7th, and they were done in middle October, and they were all delightful. And I'm still smoking them. So, this is Cannabis Man Seeds 101 Growing Techniques for Organic Cannabis, and this is my garden. And if you're interested in our seeds, the website will be going on. It'll probably be a float for a little while, but I also have novelties and collectibles that we will barter and take and trade. So thank you. Have a great day.